Hello. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Vinyl Fetish. Take My name. Two. What? Huh? Take two. Oh, episode two. <laughs> Not take two. <laughs> My name is Randy Blazak. What, who the hell are and you? And I am Andy. This is the podcast where I play records for my wife and she tells me everything else in the world. We this need a tagline. A, like, like. This is a late night edition. Um, yeah, so we're back uh, for another episode up here in the Vinyl Den here in Portland, Oregon. Um, our little hideaway. <sighs> waiting for the snow to start. Hey, so I, I have another selection for you, my dear wife. And Stop it. You're being creepy. <laughs> it's hard to be loving. <laughs> okay, come on. I, I picked this for four reasons. I picked this week's selection for four reasons. Okay. One is last week you asked me to pick something maybe you hadn't heard before. Okay. So that, that, that that's not always easy, but there is because we okay. have thousands of records here. Number two is I wanted to stay in 1977, which was last week we did Ted Nugent's album from 1977. And I got a whole bunch of shit from people for using you Ted did? Nugent. Yeah, well, like some I, guy on Reddit told me you, you spent it on 18 <laughs> you spent 18 minutes talking about Ted Nugent, this horrible person, you should delete your account. I think that's not the point of it anyway. So I wanted to pick something from that year that was different. I also did wanted you gonna, Did you pick some Jesus music? Uh, I also <laughs> wanted to pick something um that we're going to New York next week, so I wanted to pick something that was fitting from New York. Okay. And there's a there's a fourth reason when I can't remember what it is because there's a there's a website that has uh -huh. like what the band is and what you should drink with the band and so and this it's week a it's clue, right? It's two buck chuck. Two buck chuck. So there's a Charles there's Schwab. a really good fourth reason. I've rehearsed the fourth reason in my head and I can't remember what it is. Sorry. Old age. <laughs> this is the way it's gonna go. Okay, so let's okay. get started. Okay. Let's get let's started. Let's I want it. you I want this reaction and then on the other side of the, there's a discussion to go along with it. Okay. Okay. Alright. So <laughs> there's a really I can't remember what the fourth reason well, is. Well, you're supposed to be on top of this. Oh uh, okay. So our album tonight is Television's first album, Marquee Moon, from nineteen seventy seven. And so there's a little bit of a story, and you could get it at Chapter Three uh, Records. That's expensive. Five dollars and seventy nine cents. Weren't in they like a quarter? Nineteen seventy, not nineteen seventy seven. <laughs> uh, this was recorded summer of seventy six. Comes out February of nineteen seventy seven. Um, so here's a little bit of the story. Tom Verlaine, the leader of the band. This this was the house band at CBGB's in New York City in okay. nineteen seventy five. It was a part of the burgeoning punk scene. In fact, when this record came out, they toured with Blondie, uh, who was also part of the punk scene. And one of the reasons I thought you might be interested in this is Tom Verlaine. That's not his real name, but he was just sort of obsessed with French poetry. It looks like zombies. Like uh, another friend of ours, Patti Smith. They were the house band with Patti Smith's band. Patti and Tom dated. Really? Yes. So they were an item. In fact, she tried to get them a record deal. They had recorded a demo with uh, Brian Eno and they didn't like it. She, after Tom Berlin was dating a guy from Blue Oyster Cult of all bands mm -hmm. and did a demo with them and they liked it and they ended up becoming this, this sort of hot, hotly sought after band in 1976 and they ended up um, recording on Electra Records. Uh, and putting this record out, and uh, it, it sold zero. Okay. It sold zero, but it was actually kind of a big hit in England. And so the reason this record is significant is, and what why I want to get your feedback on it, it is one of those records that didn't sell a lot, but had a huge impact. And I want you to hear it and think about where you've heard this sound before, because this record, you know, was kind of, I, you know, so it comes out in 77. I didn't get it until I was in college. Uh, because as a teenager, I don't, I didn't really understand this music. So, um, so uh, by the way, the cover is done. Uh, the photo is taken by Robert Mablethorpe, who, of course, a great photographer, did Patti Smith's record and lived with Patti Smith and the Just Kids was about it, about their relationship. Um, inspired by Andy Warhol, uh, it was actually a photocopy. They were trying to do a cheap version of Andy Warhol's uh, prints. Uh, and so the cover is kind of significant because it's, oh, the other reason, oh, I don't know, that, the other reason, anyway, about New York. It's kind of a lot about New York, the Lower East Side, where we're going to be staying, Bowery. 
Um, but I want to play it for you because... Well, how about you ask me some questions Well, so, about have it. you ever heard of this band? No. Okay. <laughs> what else should I ask you about? <laughs> I don't know. I want to play it for you, then I want to ask you about it. What do you, like, maybe you could ask me what kind of music do you think it is? Okay, well, that's I a good question. You're, what kind of music? Okay, no, no, that's good. to be more involving. Okay, well, I thought I was getting the... Ri this is the two-buck chart. I was... <laughs> okay. I was gonna play it for you and then get your reaction yeah, but, so, but the fun part is also asking before oh i didn't know there was a before i thought there was only like, an after like what do you think before okay, and then what, what do you, do you think, think after okay. so i don't know <laughs> okay so what Cut do you this part looking out. at this what do you think what do you think this might sound like no from what i've told you wait, house wait, bandit wait. cbgb's there were the house bandit cbgb's birthplace of American punk rock where the Ramones and the Talking Heads and Blondie and all those other play people came from. Uh -huh. Late 70s. Uh -huh. This comes out in February 77. And so what 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 do you expect when I play this? A really good like poetry maybe. Okay. Like because they're hanging out with an artist and Patty. Yeah. They got to be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And also you have a record, so... <laughs> you have a record, so... <laughs> okay. You have the record. Why would you have it if it's crap? Okay. But, yeah. Then I think I should play it. Okay. Uh, and we'll get your reaction, because it might be different than that. Okay, okay we're going to start with television. Can I see it? And the song that we're going to start with is See No Evil. Okay. Okay. Friction. I want to listen to Friction. <laughs> All right. You are totally right. And yep. I'll tell you exactly why. Yeah. Okay, so that's not what I expected you to say, but you are 100% right on that. You're welcome. Because, okay, so these guys were kind of seen as the, you know, the, I don't know, the godfathers of the punk scene because a lot of the punk stuff was fast and furious. Love Comes in Spurts, which is somebody who was connected to this band song. You know, and the Ramones and a lot of that fast stuff. But these guys were talented musicians and they were influenced by French mm -hmm philosophy and literature but also you know more c talented guys so the guitar okay. stuff is kind of they're all guys yeah it's all guys what? Huh? what and it doesn't and so the question for me for you is does it, this was in 1977 this was punk rock no but sleater kenny is very punk rock mm. No, they're not. They're not really punk rock. They're so, rock. The, the, so who was expecting? Who this had a huge impact on in the '80s was. Give me a clue. Uh, two bands that I'm very connected with. One that I played on stage with once. You too. You too. You <laughs> too is hugely affected by television. Okay. Bono has said this album was hugely influential. Another band. Talking Heads. No, but well, they were peers, but also another band from Athens, Georgia, who I also we went to a wedding of one of their members, REM, REM, right? So, uh, hugely influenced by television, the Pixies, also television, yeah. So, cool. yeah, so this record was really 
And you said it didn't have a lot of impact? No, I mean, it had an impact, but, but it like didn't sell. Yeah, yeah, underground. Oh, okay, okay. It didn't sell. So I'm, I'm going to play you one more song, which okay. is the title song, Marquee Moon. And what what I want you to hear is the that it, it might in some ways sound closer to Pink Floyd than it does to what we think of punk rock now, even though this was a part of the punk rock thing, all right? Okay, okay. Which one? So, so the, oh, the voice was, excuse me, the voice in, in, in the late seventies, that voice, the fact that he wasn't singing like Freddie Mercury, that frame, he wasn't boy. singing like Freddie Mercury was get in know, the frame. kind of made it punk. Come. Um, so that part of it was, you know, it was so weird. Like it's so, it was so different than anything else that sounded, but as a teenager to me, it didn't. It didn't rock enough. I didn't you quite get it. You want to see your beautiful face? I wanted, I wanted, <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted the Ramones in, 19, in there, actually, probably Kiss Records in 1977. So I didn't quite get it. I didn't get this until I was in college years later. Okay. What year is this? 77. February 77 comes out right before my 13th birthday. And what other music is happening? Well, I mean... What, the, what's right, the popular music? Disco. Everything disco. is going very okay. disco in 19... This is right before Saturday Night Fever comes out, so everything is beginning to be very disco-oriented. This and, like, classic rock kind of stuff, you know, big... So, so, 1977 was the year that Kiss ruled the world, and I was in the Kiss Army, and... So this was so off the radar. So why in the world would Drinkify suggest Two Buck Chuck for this? <laughs> <laughs> well, because they're because a lot of these songs are about bohemianism in the mm. Bowery. You can't afford expensive. You can't ex no exactly, and it's all about like sitting in your crappy apartment reading. So this is what this is all about. This is what this is all about is the pose of being an artist uh -huh. and having this record. So this record, you have it because you want to prove to people that you're cool. Like, this record, besides being a great record, and, you know, like, Rolling yeah, Stone in the 80s had it in, like, the top 10 albums of all time, and, you know, there is this, like, thing that sociologists call cultural capital. Like, mm -hmm. whether or not you like it, having it confers upon you a certain hipness. Like, if you have a television record in your collection, well, you must be cool, because whether you like but, it or yeah, not. Yeah, but cool to who? To the cool... To people like you? Yeah, to the hipster to, like, crowd. Yeah. Older, yeah, gents. older, but no younger. So one of the things I'm hoping about this thing that we're doing, I'm, I am a little drunk. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, I was supposed to be the drunk one. I know, Damn I just it. Sort of, okay, <laughs> is that young people might be able to use our YouTube channel to find out what's cool to have, yeah, dude. like what is really cool? Because this room, I've been collecting records since the mid 1970s in this room, and this is not crap that you can buy. At, at Urban Outfitters. At Urban Outfitters. This is not something that you're going to get from the mail. This we, is a lifetime of, of record collecting. Can we please talk about the people that say that they have a record collection when they have like five <laughs> they have, records? They have like a dozen records they got that they pay for like $20 each for the record. No, you have to hang out in record stores. You have to comb use record bins you have to go to yard sales like it's a lifelong it's a passion it's a lifelong passion that you don't just do as a pose yeah but and i'm not 
taking any credit for any of this. I'm here to learn. I'm not like, this is my record collection. But your perspective is very valuable because I love you and I know that you understand what good music is. So if I'm going to play you something and you're like, that's oh, crap. Yeah. Then I have to defend it or I have to at least <laughs> say, oh, maybe it is crap. We fight about it. Because a lot of stuff that I bought, I bought because it was cool. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just like, why do I have this record? I haven't listened to it in 30 years. So how often do you, uh, you I play this all the time. I have it on CD as well. You do? Yeah, I have they have two albums and I love both of them. But I didn't get it when I was young. Ugh. God bless you, my child. <laughs> so so what I'm So here's a question <laughs> we want to ask is do you have any music that you have just because it's cool to have it? Yes. Like that's the question. Like do people kind of let's like, you know, no. you buy a book or you buy an outfit because it's it make it carries some weight. Again, we use this term cultural capital. It carries like some weight with it. There's I, there are well, records that I have that I'm supposed to have as a record collector that I'm not like Captain Beefheart. I don't quite. There's the like fuck is that? yeah, we'll get into that. It'll be like episode thirty-seven. <laughs> there's like some of it that I just don't quite get, or that I get later. Like I didn't understand Frank well, Zappa until much later in my life. Do you ever feel like you're is it a farce like you when you're listening to a music that you sh really shouldn't be listening to yeah kind of like how people listen to solange because <laughs> <laughs> we love solange well yeah but like you're a white guy like is it okay for you to say you love that i yeah. mean i i kind of feel like i i do love it but i, I I feel a little bit guilty because there are some things like I love jazz, but you're supposed to be all about Charlie Parker and he was an incredible innovator, but I don't think those records are that great or recorded, but I have them because I'm supposed to have them See? as a jazz fan. So everybody does But I don't this, really listen right? to, I don't like ever really listen to Charlie Parker. I listen to John Coltrane all day long, but so I don't, why do you ha because so I'm supposed to, because you can't be a jazz fan without like some bird in your collection. Even though he's brilliant, I just think they weren't recorded very well, and I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so yeah, I'm guilty. But the question guilty. for you folks watching, because we want to start getting people commenting on this in the discussion, do you own anything that you own because you're supposed to own it, not because you're into it? Just personally? for the cover art. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, there have been some albums that I've bought for the, yeah. yeah. So, but. But so, but you can kind of see how television, how this record had an impact. I don't, you know, it's like I, I heard Springsteen when I was a teenager and I didn't really, when he was out, when like Born because to Run came out when teenager. I was, you Born to Run understand. came out when I was 11 years old and I was like, why are people going crazy over this? I don't get it. Because you didn't work at a factory and get your girlfriend pregnant yeah. by the river. No, and that didn't happen until a few <laughs> years later. Then I was way into it. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Why do they look like zombies? Well, they were all just um, and does that drinking a lot. That? That's just that's just a bad photocopy. It was it's like it. They were trying to do Warhol. They were trying to do Warhol. It was all Lower East Side where we will be. We'll they be staying like in junkies. Chinatown, so we'll be walking the streets that this band walked down many times. This looks like a poster for The Walking Dead. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> What? Well, that was the look, right? They're starving artists. These are starving artists. They're all still yeah, alive. That's the beauty wait, of it. I know, it still has the shrink wrap on it from the record <laughs> bar from 1977. Um, oh. Okay. So, so, so do, uh, have I, have I given you something... This? Have I given you something that you didn't know before that you now know about this band television? This is new. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like a chick. But I like it. Okay, okay, that's what I want. I want. I want to turn you on. <laughs> that's my goal. Any to other... vinyl? What? To vinyl. Why don't you give them the folks watching? What the, should they do? What should they do now? What should they do now? Of what? <laughs> go, go have sex with your girlfriend. <laughs> all what? you, all you Sleater Kitty fans <laughs> out there listening, you girls should go have sex with your girlfriend and boys. Well, no, I hope that people are watching the our channel as a way to... Because this is another thing we were talking about, how people your generation versus my generation... We're two different generations, by the way. Very... <laughs> how we kind of 
put each other, well, you guys put us down more than... We kind of well, every it. older generation but puts the younger. You, guys you kids that, don't understand. Yeah, but you guys think that we can't we can't like older music, or we're putting on a, a like a fake face when we're listening to rock, like when we're wearing the t-shirts, and you're like, you know, you yeah. don't know anything about that. You've so got a Misfits shirt on. You've never heard a Misfits should, record. You should use music as a way to bond and not separate yourself like from. Like we've done. What? We've separ we've used music to bond and we have a three year old to prove it. We like yeah. Learn from this. So <laughs> We are the role models of intergenerational communication. Well, I'm just saying I really don't like it when people judge you based on your age and, and assume that you can't like anything outside of your time. Because that's I like Beethoven. Yeah, you're He's even yeah, older than no, I am. You're too young for that. <laughs> so. Okay. So let's end this by telling people, please join us each week as we... Comment. Comment. Don't subscribe. be mean to us. Be mean. It's fun. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to end this right okay, now. Okay, guys. Next week. Peace. Television. Yes. Yeah.